They asked me about the kind of coding language that I prefer. We actually need to ask the questions, the right kind of questions. It's not common that you hear a lot of people getting called from the recruiter. I used to work uh, from morning 8 to evening 8. But yeah, we may look at 12 hours of work, but it was fun. Hi, this is Himanshu Thakur, Chief Editor at Renesa, bringing to you the next episode of The Intern View. Today we have, from the batch of 25, Ansa, who interned at Google. So, let's begin this episode. Ansa, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Ansa. I'm a Computer Science and Engineering student from SVNIT. I'm a fourth year student here, and I interned at Google this summer of 2024. Let's see. Okay. So, how did you come across this opportunity? What was the process like? Uh, how did you, uh, you know, apply and what happened afterwards? So, I actually got an email from a recruiter who found that uh, my profile actually matched an opening and he wanted to know if I was interested and he wanted me to apply through a Google Forms and uh, it basically involved a resume screening round where they go through my resume and check for the skills, if they're matching or not. If I was selected, then I would be taken to initial discussion of 15 minutes where they actually talk about, they ask about your experience, uh, the projects that you have worked on, if you have any coding experience before, such as lead code or uh, code forces. And they asked me about the kind of coding language that I prefer uh, for the interviews. And then after that, I was invited to a technical interview, uh, which was a basic one. I was a lead code easy kind of easy to medium. Uh, where they wanted to test my knowledge on basic uh, operations such as strings, arrays, <coughs> etc. And then after that, then I was, uh, the interview was pretty chill. So he made us very comfortable. So he gave us an int introduction of himself and uh, it was kind of chill. Then after that, I was invited to a second round of interview, which was kind of lead code, uh, medium hard kind of question. Well, he directly went into this uh, problem directly straight up. There was no introduction or anything. He said, like, we'll do introduction the later. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was the NRA problem, NRA tree. And it was kind of quite intimidating in the beginning. So actually what he wanted to know was how I think about the problem. The question was open-ended and uh, we, we, we actually need to ask the questions, mm -hmm. the right kind of questions. Yeah. Oh. So like, it sounds like your experience of the application process was a little different than it goes for many people. You actually applied in your second year, if I believe. So tell me about that. Like you applied in second year and then what happened that led up to a recruiter reaching out to you? Yeah, actually, yeah, it was, it's not common that you hear a lot of people getting called from the recruiter. So I think what made me stand out was the kind of contributions that I did in my GitHub. So I used to do a lot of open source in my first year and second year. So I was part of this Kiskit camp program where we had this kind of mentorship from IBM, uh, the employees of IBM, and I worked on that. And uh, the kind of passion projects that I have worked during my second year, I think that actually made me stand out. The kind of consistency that I maintained on my GitHub, you, you can see a lot of every day I've been pushing some commits, uh, participating in the discussions, etc. Right. Yeah, so just to recap, you applied at Google in your second year, didn't pan out then, but the recruiter had your profile. Yes. Then they reached out to you in third year and then set up an interview for you. And the difficulty you can expect, well, there are multiple rounds, but it goes from starting off with relatively easy to all the way to open-ended difficult questions where you really need to mm -hmm. have your thought process laid out. And you can code in any language. Python is fine. So the first years don't need to worry so much about Java, C++, Python. Everything is kosher. Everything is fine. So yeah, So the, uh, when you're do doing the, inter uh, the interview, so what they look for you is the way you're thinking. So actually, uh, it would be good to think out loud so that they know what's happening behind your head because then they are not interviewing your uh, ability to solve a problem but instead how we are solving the problem and how it's different how it's making it different so that would be a good point to do when you're doing an interview uh, yeah and ask the right questions and understand the problem uh, optimally efficiently so that you can solve the problem good so these interviews must have happened somewhere around the fall semester the uh, odd semester that is by when did you get your offer then so uh, the first email I got it was during August 
and then my interviews were over by first week of october and then i got my interview so my offer in the end of march it was pretty late and that yeah. was was a lot of waiting <laughs> i see uh, must have been some anxious months over there yes, yeah sure. but hey it panned out yeah. so then uh, after you got the offer you've reached uh, the google campus uh, tell me how the internship was like in the sense that uh, was it online offline hybrid uh just tell me about the office and how it was like to go there so the internship it was a uh, hybrid mode uh, they require you to be present at uh, office 3 days a week okay. but in the end it actually depends on your team mm. so uh, if your team is okay with you being at home the whole week so it's fine you can do that and uh, right and uh, were you given a choice in which location to go to and even how long of an internship to do yeah so you were actually asked yeah, you can actually get this option of uh, choosing either bangalore pune or hyderabad so yeah you actually get, get a preference option but in the end it depends on where your team sits and how this team matching works it's by uh, the managers go through your resumes and if they find that the project they are having as set of skills which are mentioned in your project in your uh, resume so then you'll be assigned that particular team and uh, yeah yeah and the duration of the internship so the duration you were given a choice of 10 to 12 weeks and i chose the 12 weeks so that i could get the the i mean longest project and i could experience the google max hmm. okay so we, you've reached there okay and it's like a hybrid mode you're entering office we've all heard stories about google campus uh, that the food is amazing that they might even have massage centers over there so just tell us about your experience in that campus yeah even though you have this option of doing work from home i don't think nobody will be doing that <laughs> in the first two weeks because right when you get into the office it's so colorful like you get this bright colors of red green blue yellow of this google logo and you have this google logo it's very i don't aesthetically pleasing you have this recreation areas over one side and you have this cafe areas you have this free uh, massage every year yeah. <laughs> and you have this uh, vending machines where you can take whatever you want the snacks it's amazing it's pretty chill and it's very good i mean the food it tastes really good and you have various other options such as uh, continental street food or indian whatever whatever your mind wish you can just go and have that yeah it's really good okay and your intern was at bangalore right mm-hmm. okay so that's google bangalore campus that you yes. access okay so cool so beyond that getting to the actual internship itself how was the work like uh, if you can share what kind of project or tech stacks you worked with in uh, an overview uh, of what the work was like Okay, so I was assigned to Google Ads team. Ads. Yeah, so where we most basically used uh, C plus plus, Python, protocol buffers, and a lot of other internal tools. Mm-hmm. It's quite uh, hard in the beginning, uh, because but you don't need to be afraid of that because you have this Google Technical Inclusion training programs, which will last almost two weeks, and after that you'll be pretty good to go by yourself, and yeah, and. Uh, mm. Okay, and uh, how rigorous was the documentation? Uh, you know, you would expect Google to be a very well-oiled machine. So, what was your experience like? Uh, was the documentation there for you to read and go, or was it all overwhelming? You left out in the wild. Uh, so, one thing I like about uh, at Google is that uh, they have this extensive documentation process. They require you to write each and everything why you did a particular design and what was the reason behind this. and so that that's pretty good i mean you have a document but it's your i mean you have to discover what the document is you have to ask the right people uh, where to find the such documentation and they'll help you out okay. and even in the end of the internship you have this knowledge transfer sessions where you actually pass this uh, knowledge of what you have learned from uh, during the internship so that other people can pick up on your project and you have you have to document everything i see so uh in all this process we've talked about documentation and approaching other people so how involved were your mentors and managers in your internship experience itself so uh while beginning you'll be assigned uh, two managers a host and co-host who will be responsible for your internship so they'll be the people who will be hosting the project and uh, they'll be the one who will be evaluating you in the end as well so you'll be having a weekly sync with them i'll be seeing your uh, progress you'll be sharing your progress uh, 
if you are facing any blockers they'll be able to help you out and they'll so they are the people who actually makes you feel googly so they introduce you to the google's culture right and uh, they introduce you to the teammates they have we have this kind of uh, uh, team bonding events where it's fun that we actually get to know a lot of googlers and all and they were quite helpful i see okay so how were the workers uh work, was there a work life balance involved uh, how satisfied were you with that and how flexible was it over there in the office when could you be in and out of the office basically right you don't have anything as a work hours you can just come and go at any time you can work over whenever you want but when you have when you're having uh, meetings then you'll have to be there but in then you can do a virtual meeting as well mm. but uh, let's say you have a teammate from a different country right. then you'll have to adjust your time according to them so that both of the parties are it's fine if uh, both parties agree on the time so i used to work uh, from morning 8 to evening 8 but yeah we may look at uh, 12 hours of work but it was fun it's like my morning hours would be uh, just breakfast uh, just going uh, reading the emails stuff then having lunch then going to the gym taking a shower coming back work dinner it was kind of good the work life is good uh, you have good work life balance and they don't actually pressure you mm-hmm. one thing about the internship at google is that they actually make you work on uh, real impactful projects right. the, the the project that i did on was actually uh, pushed the prod right of oh. our project and that's actually cool and it's like a flex you can actually show yes and uh, mm. i see so just a lot of positives all around uh, you get a good team uh, they make you involved in the culture it seems it's flexible and you end up doing impactful work so you know there are juniors who are going to be listening to this you know in their first year or perhaps just joining college so what advice would you have for that what kind of uh, path would you want them to forge ahead as they go along in their degrees one thing that i found a kind of trend in the uh, first year it's is that uh, they usually go to the notion of doing dsa or web development or just going to the mon stack it's kind of monotonous and it's actually a lot of people doesn't like it i have met a lot of juniors and uh, they don't actually like that but they just still end up doing this because they don't want to miss out on uh, good internships or a uh, good offer from great companies but yeah but that's something i did differently was that i actually explored it on my, on my own pace so i went through various open source repositories and all it was actually interesting there, there are a lot to computer science other than just software engineering you have this cyber security data engineering Yeah, lots of other things. I mean, yeah. it's just not software engineering. You don't have to do web development, and uh, not just DSA. Mm-hmm. Just even if you're doing DSA, it's about problem solving, right? You don't have to think it as a problem solving more than just getting a good number on lead code, just solving X number of problems on lead code, because that doesn't matter in the end. Right. Uh, talk about your GitHub because this seems to be the thing that set you apart in the first place as well. uh juniors could probably use this and uh, you know be more active in their own contributions over there so you know talk about open source or just uh making cool stuff that they're passionate about themselves so actually i got into this open source uh when i got into this uh camp program of kiskit ibm so that's how i was introduced into the open source and i had a mentor who taught me like how to approach a repository uh, so let's say So whenever I faced a problem, I used to create a solution for that, and then I thought like, okay, there'll be a lot of other people who will be facing the same issue. So that's when I created a solution on my GitHub and hosted it so that everyone else can use. So that's when I thought about, okay, there'll be a lot of other repositories as well who wants to solve the problem, and I'm passionate about that. So then I went to the search for a lot of repositories, and uh, found a few, and uh, I found one uh, called AppFlowy, which was a alternative to Notion. right which was uh, quite interesting people who don't know what notion is could you just give a chance acha so notion is a uh, note taking platform uh, where you can just take notes uh, link multiple pages add images it's just like a better version of google docs yeah <laughs> so uh, so it, that's actually a paid one notion it has a premium features and all but uh, we have this app flowy which is an open source version and then uh, i got into like i would suggest people to explore a lot of open source mentorship programs because there are a lot available online but people are actually missing out on them we have uh, this google summer of code uh, lfx programs bitcoin bitcoin yeah summer of bitcoin that's actually a cool one yes yeah, so there are a lot of problem uh, there are a lot of programs and there are a lot of people willing to help you out yeah. but just juniors are just missing out on that 
so i would suggest uh juniors to explore fields when they are in the first year mm. so that they could get an idea of whole computer science what it has and what it has to offer then in the second year maybe just go into the depth of what your interest is that be good right so from my side as well i second this advice computer science doesn't only have to be about just doing the beaten path that is dsa and web development you can get passionate about something make that and just keep doing it and what do you know one day you can end up at google so yeah this has been ansa and this has been the next iteration of the intern view hope you had a good time hope you learned something we'll see you guys next time